Hey y'all, and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. For today's video, we're going to do a little story time so I can tell you where the hell I've been the last month. As you can probably see from the title of this video, it's quite a story. But first, a little bit of housekeeping. I wanted to let y'all know that moving into 2020, I'm going to be switching my upload schedule from every week to every other week and still trying to get as many videos out as I can but not forcing myself to get it out get one out every single week because of the story that I'm about to go into so where the hell have I been what happened why have I not been uploading Why was I in the ER? We're gonna get into all of that right now. Grab yourself a coffee, a cup of tea, a snack. I've got some water here since I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking. And uh, sit back and listen to my awful Thanksgiving story. Okay, so this story starts out the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. I was on my way to work in my tiny little car and a pickup truck rear-ended me. We pull off onto, onto a little side street, he knows it's his fault, he is really apologetic. Um, my car was still drivable but just barely, the back of it was pretty bent in um, and I was really shaken up. I was like full of adrenaline, I was shaking and I was, I was just like, so I wasn't I wasn't that far from home. I called my boyfriend and was like, hey, I was in an accident. Will you come, like, see the car, see if we can get it home? Like, will you just come be with me and help me out, right? So I exchanged information with the guy that hit me. And funny enough, he was like the most sweet southern boy, most West Texas little southern boy you could think of. So I exchanged information. And then he left, my boyfriend got there, and I was too scared to drive my car. So he actually drove my car home, and I drove his car home. I called into work, and I was like, hey, I'm not going to be able to come in until later because I've got to deal with this situation. I called my insurance company, I called all the people, and set up all the appointments, and, and put the claim in, and do all that. So... Around 11 or 12, uh, one of the girls I work with texted me and was like, hey, are you going to be able to come in? Like, I need to go to the store. We need somebody here while, I'm, while, I, can, while I leave. And I was like, yeah, I, I can try and come in. So I take my boyfriend's car to work that day. I only work a half day. I take it easy because, like, I'm still very shaken up. I come home. Everything's fine. And actually, I probably should have started this story with, all through November, I was working on Thanksgiving prep. I was making things each week so that by the time Thanksgiving came, it would be a really easy day. So I got home Tuesday, worked on some Thanksgiving prep. Wednesday morning, normal day, I drive to work, work all day, come home, and I get right back in the kitchen prepping for Thanksgiving. We were actually supposed to pack up on Wednesday and drive to Dallas with all of the stuff so that Thursday we can make the meal and then drive right back home. But that is not what happened. I am packing stuff up. I'm doing a little bit of last minute prep before we are ready to drive off. And all of a sudden my heart rate spikes and I almost faint or I almost pass out. I, my head was very, like I grabbed onto the counter so that I wouldn't fall over. And I was very scared. I, I came over here and I sat on the couch next to my boyfriend and I was like, hey, my heart rate is like really high. I don't know what's going on. I'm really scared. I felt like I was going to pass out. And I was like sitting there trying to breathe, trying to bring my heart rate down and it just wouldn't come down. So we decide, okay, we're going to go to an emergency room. We're going to see like what's going on, see if it's just like a panic attack or see if it's like more serious. And we walked downstairs. By the time we, like, while we were walking downstairs, my heart rate kind of dropped 
a little bit, but then it, I could still feel it like beating really hard and really fast and it wasn't coming down. And I have an Apple Watch, so I was like tracking my heart rate during this. So I'm trying to just take deep breaths to bring my heart rate down. Still not coming down. We get to the emergency room. There's one like around the corner from our house. We get there and he's, my boyfriend's filling out the paperwork for me. We're trying to check in and I'm the only one there. So I'm like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Like someone see me, like I don't know what's happening. I'm freaking out, still taking deep breaths. By the time we had the paper, most of the paperwork filled out and they had a room ready for me, it felt like 10, 20 minutes, but honestly it was probably more like five or 10 minutes. They take me back and my fingers and my, to my toes started to like tingle, started to be tingly. And I was, and I told the doctor as we were walking back, like, Hey, my hands and feet are starting to get really tingly. And she was like, breathe normally, stop taking deep breaths because that can change the, your blood chemistry. So I inadvertently didn't realize that I was taking deep breaths for an extended period of time. And that was what was causing the tingliness in my fingers and my toes. When I started breathing normally, that went away really quickly. So that was a relief. They put me on the bed. I And so at this point on Wednesday, I hadn't eaten anything. And I wasn't really going to eat until like probably Thursday dinner because I just, I wasn't hungry. I knew that I was going to have a big ass meal the next day. I was just like busy prepping and like trying to get to Dallas and doing all this stuff. So I was like, I'll just eat tomorrow, which I've been doing intermittent fasting. So not eating for a day wasn't a big deal. didn't seem like a big deal to me. But when I don't eat after a certain amount of time, I get really cold. And that's the common thing you hear with a lot of people that intermittent fast is that you can, when you don't eat, you get really cold. So I'm in this emergency room, and everybody knows how cold doctor's offices are. Freezing. So freaking cold. They are taking my heart rate, they are taking my blood, they're taking an EKG, and I can't stop shivering. I'm just, shit, my whole body is shivering. And I'm like not sure if that has something to do with what's wrong with me, or if that's just because I haven't eaten and I'm really cold, but... They do all these tests and then they bring me some like heated blankets to help me warm up, but I was still like shivering a little bit. I think they ended up bringing me like two heated blankets at that point and I was still so cold and scared and like supposed to be on my way to Dallas, supposed to be making Thanksgiving dinner and like it's Wednesday night and I'm in the ER. While I'm laying there, my heart rate does come down a little bit, but it was still, it was still kind of elevated and I could still feel it pounding. And they run all the tests, they come back to me and say, your potassium is really low. A normal potassium level is between 3.5 and 5. And mine was 2.7, which is considered extremely low. So at that ER, they gave me a potassium pill and they gave me a potassium IV drip. Potassium is an electrolyte that helps regulate your heartbeat and I just had a very low potassium level. They asked me like, do you stay hydrated? And I'm like, yeah, I drink plenty of water and they're like, well, do you drink anything like Gatorade or anything with electrolytes? And I'm like, no, because everybody always says drink more water. Nobody says drink more electrolytes. Like I'd never heard that. And they're like, oh, well, that's part of staying hydrated. You need to drink electrolytes so that you can keep these levels up. And I'm like, I didn't know that at all until this whole thing happened. So they keep me in, they move me to a different room with like a more comfortable bed. And they keep me until about midnight while they do the potassium drip. And my heart rate comes down and we decide, okay, when we're released, we're going to go home go to sleep, and then in the morning drive to Dallas so that we don't have to, like, drive to Dallas in the middle of the night. 
And I'm like, okay, fine. So at this point, I'm like super tired. My head feels really weird because when my heart rate jumped, my head was feeling like it makes your head feel really weird. And I was like, okay, fine. So they finish the drip. I get released. I go home, go to sleep. We get up the next day, we finish packing for Thanksgiving, and we drive all the way to Dallas. And when we get there, I start prepping. I start trying to take it easy, but like still kind of like doing stuff, making sure I'm getting stuff prepped. And I had some people helping me. And then early afternoon, I think, I feel myself like getting a little bit woozy. Definitely not as like Definitely not to the point on Wednesday where I, I really felt like I was this close to passing out, but I, I kind of felt it a little bit. So I sat down and I looked at my heart rate and it was like, it was raised, it was elevated. So I sat down and looked at my heart rate, I could feel that it was elevated. And so I was like, okay, I need to just like sit down for a minute. Hopefully this will go away. Well, it wasn't going away. So I went and I laid down in bed to see if like laying down relaxing would help it like come down. And it was down, it wasn't, it wasn't up to a dangerous level but it was like still elevated. After about two hours of laying in bed and it like staying kind of elevated, we decided okay, take me to the ER again. <clears throat> so this time, Thanksgiving Day. Middle of prepping Thanksgiving dinner, didn't get to finish, went to the ER. Went to the ER in Dallas. So I get to the ER and they like take my vitals and stuff. They put me in a wheelchair and they're like, yeah, your heart rate's definitely raised. They checked my potassium because we told them about everything that happened the day before. And my potassium level was at a normal level. So they gave me a beta blocker, which is something that like brings your heart rate down. The reason that the first place didn't give me a beta blocker is because my natural heart rate is fairly low because I am a pretty active person and the more, more exercise you do, the lower your resting heart rate is. So because my resting heart rate is, is on the lower end of average, they, the first ER didn't want to give me a beta blocker. The second ER did give me a beta blocker and then that brought my heart rate down. I was super tired because like low heart rate is when you sleep so after staying at that ER for a few hours getting all the tests done we decide okay my fa being around my family is really stressful I want to go back to Austin we didn't finish prepping we ended up taking a lot of the stuff home and like I ended up making it for dinner throughout the next week but like whatever was finished they ate and then whatever wasn't I kind of ruined their Thanksgiving too, which I feel really bad about. I The only thing I finished making was the daytime snacks, which was like a cheese plate and a veggie tray with an herb yogurt dip, and I'll put pictures of that up here. That was the only thing I finished for Thanksgiving this year, which kind of sucks because I spent all month planning and recipe testing and like really focusing on Thanksgiving dinner. But at the same time, I wasn't taking care of myself and I wasn't eating enough food. I was so focused on making this one meal amazing for everyone that I myself just was not eating enough food throughout November. And that could be one of the reasons that I ended up with such a low potassium. Because most vegan food, like most plants have at least a little potassium in them. And if I'm vegan, all I eat is plants. So like how I ended up with low potassium I don't really know. I was all I was also on a medication that was supposed to be potassium sparing, which means it held on to potassium, but it was also a diuretic, which means it made you pee more, so you could pee more out. So if I just like wasn't eating enough food, it didn't have an it didn't have as much potassium to hold on to. I guess I we're still trying to figure out exactly how that happened. And I've still got more doctor's appointments and a nutritionist appointment to see, to just to make sure I'm getting enough food and getting the right nutrients. But anyways, back to the story. So, Thanksgiving.
Thanksgiving. We drove all the way to Dallas, went to the ER, drove all the way back to Austin. All on Thursday. All on Thanksgiving Day. We get home. It's late. We go to bed. I wake up at like 7 a.m. Heart rate elevated again. And it wasn't elevated too high, but we had called the ER I went to the first day and was like, hey, when should we come back if it's like if it's like this high or whatever and they're like well if it's over this uh, this if it's over this many beats for this for like 10 minutes or something come back <coughs> so it was and it was jumping around a lot so we went back and i saw a different doctor at the same er i went to the first day he did all the tests and stuff and saw that my potassium was a little bit low but not low enough for them to like administer um drugs or anything. Our plan was to go to Juiceland after that anyways. He was like, yeah, smoothie's fine. The, um, you know, fruit and it will have potassium and, and it'll get you to a normal level just fine. He also gave me a muscle relaxer to help with my anxiety because my anxiety at this point was super bad. I had been to the ER three times in three days over a holiday and I couldn't see my GP. I couldn't see any specialist because everybody was closed Thanksgiving week and anxiety raises your heart rate so it was just making everything worse. So he gave me that and then gave me a prescription for it so that I could take like one as needed and I think I ended up taking like two or three over the next like two or three days I took like one a day. So he sends me home. Now we have to make an appointment with a GP for the next week to update and tell them what's been going on. And we make that appointment for Monday. So it's Friday afternoon. I can't see anybody until Monday. And I have to just like hope for the best for the next few days. And everything was fine. My heart rate did was elevated like first thing in the morning and it did jump a few times through those days but at the third ER he I, he had actually given me some techniques that I could use to bring my heart rate down which I'm really upset that the first ER didn't I'm really upset that the first time I went to that ER they didn't give me those same techniques because if they did I probably wouldn't have needed to go to the ER Thursday or Friday and I probably could have had Thanksgiving dinner which No point in dwelling on now, but I wish the first time I went to the ER they would have given me these techniques to bring my own heart rate down. So we get to Monday morning, go in, see a GP, tell him what's been going on. He turns around, calls a cardiologist, has me for an appointment first thing on Tuesday. So I'm like, cool. At this point, I've already told my boss, like, I need to take the week off so that I can focus on my health. I was supposed to work that whole next week. I was supposed to work Friday. And I had to call in to be like, hey, I can't come into work. So I go in to the cardiologist on Tuesday. And they're like, hey, we think it's this thing called SVT, which is like when a part of your heart fires when it's not supposed to. Which, he was like, it's not life-threatening unless you pass out while driving or hit your head on something. So I'm, like, terrified to be alone. I don't drive this entire week. My partner has the week off. My partner takes the week off because it's around the holidays and, and he kind of gets a lot of extra days off during this time. Which I'm so thankful for, so grateful for that he was able to be there with me all week and not leave me alone and take care of me. It was... He's the best. He's the most amazing. So we go into the cardiologist. He tells me what he thinks it is, and then he and then he gives me this 24-hour heart monitor. And the nurse like puts all these stickers on me, and she's like, "Okay, you can't shower for the next 24 hours, and it's gonna monitor your heart, and then you're gonna bring it back to us tomorrow." Okay, I wear the monitor for 24 hours. My heart rate's a little bit elevated um, the next morning, like it had been first thing in the morning for a few days now, and I was trying to take it easy, trying to like 
relax and, and find stuff to do around the house that would get my mind off of it, off of it. And Wednesday, we go back to the cardiologist to give them the heart monitor. And then they're like, okay, now you need to make an appointment to, now you need to make an appointment to get an echocardiogram. Thursday, I think, was the only day that week that I didn't have any doctor's appointments. So we actually made an appointment with uh, one of my friends who's an apartment finder because we are also moving soon and we needed to go look at apartments and we're like, well, if I can't go to work but I am allowed to walk around, we can go look at apartments. So we did that. I did end up feeling like a little bit unstable at one point and I was just like holding on to my partner as we walked around and I, I was totally fine. Like, I ended up being fine, but my, like, head felt really weird, like the cardiologist said it would. Thursday, while we're out looking at apartments, I get a call from the person that I'm supposed to schedule a echocardiogram with. And that's basically, like, a sonogram of your heart, and they take a bunch of measurements, and they, like, the same little tool they use to, like, look at babies, they use to look at your heart, basically. And I schedule my appointment for that for the, I think it was the following Monday morning. I believe is when I had that appointment, but anyways, Thursday we actually found an apartment, we found a really nice place, and hopefully I'll be able to show y'all an apartment tour when we move into there. So Friday morning I go in for an appointment just to get my blood taken so that they can measure my potassium level and make sure that it is at a normal level, that it's staying at a normal level, and I am also... That Monday when I had gone to see my GP asked if I could stop taking that medicine that could have been messing with it, so I, I stopped taking that medicine. Friday, they checked my potassium level. It was 3.7, which is in the normal range. It's, she told me, you know, make sure you're drinking electrolytes and stuff. So I'm, I get those numbs tabs, so I've been trying to drink at least one of those every other day or every few days, chill at home throughout the weekend, and like throughout this whole week, trying to find stuff to do to get my mind off of it while still being super anxious. I ended up like, we ended up decorating for Christmas. I ended up doing like a watercolor painting. I'll put up a little picture of that right here. And yeah, a lot of chilling at home. <laughs> so Monday I go in and have the echocardiogram. They don't really tell me anything. They just take all the measurements. It takes about 20, 30 minutes in like a dark room and they like do all the measurements and then they send it off to my cardiologist. So now I wait for my cardiologist to call me and make an appointment to follow up on the heart monitor and the echocardiogram. So they take all of that information, they look at it and they see, okay, what is your heart doing? Which part of it is firing incorrectly? Um, is your heart pumping enough oxygen? All that kind of stuff. So a few days later, I go back to the cardiologist and I don't remember what day of the week it was when I went back, but I went in, I think, Wednesday, maybe? Um, that next Wednesday. So at this point, I'm two weeks out from the first episode. The first time it happened. And we still don't know if any of this was related to the car accident on, on that first Tuesday. We go back to the cardiologist. He says, your heart's pumping plenty enough oxygen. You... Your heart's beating normally, I don't see any like abnormalities, um, but it's possible that the 24 hour monitor didn't catch whatever it was. So we're going to put a two week heart monitor on you. And that is, that brings us to present time. I am actually wearing the heart monitor right now. I've been wearing it for a week and a half. I get to take it off on Tuesday. That'll be New Year's Eve. I'll take it off um, Tuesday afternoon. They gave me a little box that I put it in that's already got like shipping information on it. And I shipped that off <clears throat> to where they're able to collect all the data. And then after they collect all the data, they'll be able to, uh, they'll call me and make another appointment to follow up with whatever information was on it. The good thing is that when he gave me the two-week monitor, he also said you can totally go back to normal life. That means 
you can have a drink, you can work out, you can do whatever a normal, healthy young adult can do. And he encouraged me to go back to normal life so that he can actually see what my heart is doing in a normal life. And so the last week and a half, I've been trying to get back into the groove, trying to get back to working out, trying to get back to normal life because my, my head still feels weird sometimes and it still feels off and, and trying to like focus on doing stuff so that I don't feel that because if I'm like in the moment like at work is probably the easiest place for me to, to not realize that my head feels weird because I'm just like I'm working I'm doing stuff but the second I like sit down and focus sometimes it feels like I don't know it's hard to explain and it could be it could be nothing it could be I need a new glasses prescription because I also think that that's true so like, I don't know. We'll see what happens when I when I have my follow up with the two week heart monitor. But I haven't been having episodes anymore. After about a week after like the first episode, the episodes of them happening became less and less frequent. And also like that whole time they were getting like less and less severe. And now I haven't had one for probably almost a week. And now I also have an appointment in January with a nutritionist to make sure that I'm eating in a way where I can absorb enough of the nutrients and all of that. Because while I have been on a vegan diet for a very long time and potassium is something a vegan should not have to worry about at all, it is in lots of plant foods and it is not in animal foods. So how the fuck this happened? Hopefully she'll be able to help me figure out. And hopefully she'll be able to help me figure out like how often I should be drinking electrolytes or how often I should be checking my potassium and all that kind of stuff. So that is where I have been. That is what the hell has happened this last month. Just lots of doctor's visits and trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with my heart. Moral of the story, eat your bananas, kids. And if you don't like bananas, eat dates. Because dates have higher potassium than bananas. Actually, just eat a balanced diet. Well-rounded, balanced, vegan diet, obviously, is what I'm going to, I'm going to push for. So I hope you, I hope you've had, I hope you had a better Thanksgiving than I did. I hope you had a great Christmas. I actually did end up having a pretty, fun Christmas. I, it was my first Christmas with my partner's family and they have little, my, and his sister has two little kids. So it was really cute and really fun. And, and I'm gearing up, getting ready for 2020. 2020, my big focus is going to be on taking care of my health because of all this that's happened. And that's the main reason I'm going to be switching to an every other week upload schedule because I do work full time and I do YouTube and I really need to have time to exercise and time to take care of myself in there. Let me know down in the comments how your Thanksgiving and Christmas were or whatever holidays you celebrate this time of year. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Hopefully I can get to back to being more active on those now that I'm mostly through all of this. And I will see y'all next time. I'm the Vegan Rainbow. Bye, y'all.